new channel. My name is Roxanne. Hello, if this is the, your first time here, thank you for coming on to my channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of November. Uh, I read a total of four books, one short story, and I guess four and a half books, and then one short story. Let's get right into it. The first book that I finished in the month of November, which I also I also did a full review for, and I'll link it down below, was His Majesty's Dragon by Naomi Novik. This is the first in the Timur series, um, and it was a really fun fantasy. Uh, it's about this, it is the Napoleonic Wars retold, but with dragons, which is a really cool concept, a cool and fun concept. Um, it was a fast-paced read. It was definitely very introductory. I didn't feel like there was that much action, or if there was, I felt um, there were sort of for short spurts. Um, it was it was really fun. You it was it's about this sailor sailor essentially who is able to overtake this French ship, and they find out that they have a dragon's egg on board. When the dragon hatches, he sort of forms a connection. He forms a connection with Lawrence and now Lawrence then has to move from being at sea to being in, in their core, in their air core, I think it's what it's called, aerial core, um, and sort of deal with the, the changes of that. And they have such a beautiful relationship, Lawrence and the dragon. Um, I, I, I go into it in my review, but they have such a beautiful, loving, tender, beautiful friendship that I absolutely love and I'm um, <clears throat> a little hesitant to go into the other books in this series because I feel like I don't want anything to happen to them. They're just like such little precious babies and I don't want anything to happen to them or just sort of try and get in the way of their friendship. So, um, but I definitely do want to continue with the series again. It's just another, like, it's just a really fun fantasy read and I gave this one four out of five stars. Then I went on to read The Hobbit um, by J.R.R. Tolkien. Tolkien. Um, this is another fun fantasy. It's it's about an adventure. I'm sure most, if not all, of you know about what this is about. I started reading this before the movies came out, um, and never finished it. And so I decided to sort of re um, to try and get into the story again. And so. I skim read the first part of it and then sort of picked up where I had left off and it's 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 such a great story about a wonderful journey that this hobbit goes on with these um, dwarves and with this this wizard and it's sort of everything you kind of dream about doing yourself like especially someone like me who is very much a homebody I mean I do enjoy going out but I I guess I really haven't had the chance to be super adventurous yet and so I dream of the things that you know he does and so um, that Bilbo does so it's it's really fun um, I think I gave this yeah I gave this a four out of five stars again uh, I loved it I haven't read the the Lord of the Rings trilogy yet I hear that some of them sort of read like a Bible like this guy son of this guy son of this guy son of this guy son of this guy uh, which isn't fun, it's very dry. Well, this was very fun and energetic and easy and accessible to read. And I really, really enjoyed this one and I had a lot of fun with it. So I don't, I mean, I have the other ones because I bought a box set and I do want to at some point try them, but I'll, I'm, pro I'm a little more hesitant about those than I was about this one because pretty much everyone that I talked to says that they loved this one and then were just like, meh, about the other three. So maybe I'll just stick to the movies, but... I don't know. We'll see. Um, I reread actually *The Awakening* by Kate Chopin. I read this one back in high school, and I didn't remember much about it. I mean, I remembered the ending, and I remembered somewhat what it was about, but not that much. Um, it is about this woman down in New Orleans, and it's about um, it's sort of a social commentary on the oppression of women, the pressures that society and marriage puts on put yeah on women and how this woman deals with it and so what was her name again it's about this woman mrs pontellier and she doesn't really have a connection with her children um nor with her husband nor does she feel compelled to do the things that society expects of her and that her husband's someone who very much pays attention to what society expects of them and what 
their neighbors have to say and very much about sort of their social status with their friends he um, expects a lot out of her and these are things that she doesn't want to do they don't she's not she doesn't really feel compelled to do any of that and so it's a story about how she deals with that how she's able to find her way out um, and sort of her own individual way of dealing with that there, I know there's a lot of issues about the ending of it, but I, I really enjoyed it. I, I understood I understood it and I understood sort of what led her to, to make the decisions that she makes throughout the book. And it's a pretty short short one, so you can definitely read it in about a day, day and a half or so. Um, it is ripe with symbolism and with foreshadow and it's told beautifully and I really enjoyed it. I know that a lot of, when I posted a picture on my Instagram, that I was reading it, a lot of my friends were saying how it's still one of their favorite sort of feminist reads and they love it. And so, yeah, I recommend it. It's very good. Um, the reason I gave this a four out of five, I think, let's see. Yeah, I gave it a four out of five stars. And the reason that I didn't give it a five out of five was because there is, again, um, and it's to be expected about the time in which it was written, but again, I don't want to feel like I'm giving it sort of my stamp of approval. There is um, racism interwoven into the story when they talk about servants or when they talk about some of the characters going off to Mexico or their interactions with individuals from Mexico and I just don't like that, that doesn't sit well with me so no matter, d despite the fact that I can understand, not understand but I can sort of expect that it's going to be in certain books just because of the time in which they were written doesn't mean that I want to feel like I'm um, excusing it or, or giving it, again, my stamp of approval so I gave this a 4 to 5 stars, didn't want to give it that extra star just because of all of that but I do overall do recommend this one and yeah go ahead and give it a read and then let me know what you guys think I apologize if I'm a little like down today I feel like I'm a little bit more energetic usually but I have a horrible headache um, and I just got home from work but I really wanted to get um, this done for you guys and you know I just wanted to upload I didn't want to get lazy or anything so I thought I would just go around right ahead and push through um, so hopefully it's not too evident that I'm not at 100%. Then I went on to read what quickly became one of my favorite books of all time. Definitely my favorite of the month and one of my favorites of the whole year. And that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Thank you to Hannah for sort of pushing me to read this. Um, this book is absolutely beautiful. It's about this um magical circus that ran just shows up in 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 different towns throughout the world and it is there's a mystery about it and it's beautiful and you see these amazing acts that you wouldn't see anybody anywhere else and so on to the, that is sort of like the first level that most people see but beyond that it's is this magical fight between two individuals two magicians who have been chosen from when they were young to fight as proxies for these other two individuals so there are two older magicians who sort of have this riff and have always been very competitive and they host these big magical competitions and so they each choose a young magician to raise and to train and then provide them with a setting in which they will have this this magical duel and it can take years and it's essentially um you know who can who can outlast the other and it's so beautifully written and it's so atmospheric and it's like this blanket of magic wraps itself around you when you're reading this book and i absolutely love it I think, I mean, if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know how much I love anything magical. Just, I wish, I, I so hate that I don't have magical powers. Like, I don't think you guys understand how much I hate it. But um, reading this was so, it was so unique because it's a, ve it's a very unique type of magic. You're not really told in detail what makes them magical or how they can do what they do um, but you it just sort of is and and it's beautiful and it doesn't take away from the story the fact that it's not 
ridiculously detailed or anything like I hear some of Brandon Sanderson's or his magical systems are very detailed and very intricate this one is is just very it flows and it's just very magical obviously and I didn't really need to have a textbook definition of how they did what they did or, or anything like that because it was just the the mystery surrounding it was part of what kept sort of enticing me to come back to it and and kept me glued to the story the whole time um this is another one that i will be rereading probably pretty soon because i feel like this is one of those books that every time you read it you find another sort of beautiful element to it that you might have missed the first time around and yeah it just completely gripped my heart and i absolutely love it and i definitely recommend it um, I know a lot of people have heard about this book and have talked about this book, so I don't know that I'll be doing a full review on it, but um, so I, but I want to talk about it a little bit here. But yes, this is five out of five stars for sure. One of my favorites. It's just so amazing. And if I could pick, like, you know those questions where they're like, if you could pick a magical place to go to or whatever, it would definitely be the circus. I mean, the things that they describe, the mazes, the, the acrobats, the the clocks everything everything is just so beautiful and yeah I mean I could not recommend it more so please please read this if you have already read this please let me know down below what you think about it please talk to me about it because I'm absolutely obsessed and it's beautiful magical and I love it I love it I love it I, love it. I read about 50% of um, Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes I won't talk too much about this one because I did finish it in December and I'll probably I'll, I'll talk about it in my December wrap-up and I'll probably actually I do want to do a full review about this I have like a page and a half full of notes on this because this was another beautiful beautiful book a heartbreaking book that I absolutely loved but I'll just tell you what it's about and it's about this um, New York man who has always had a very very low IQ but he's always had this thirst and this desire to learn but unfortunately he's unable to in the way that he wants to in the way that is most traditionally seen um and so he is chosen to be part of this experiment that has thus far only been um done on animals and has been successful on animals it has increased exponentially the intelligence of uh well actually not exponentially it's 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 raised significantly the in the intelligence of the animals in which it was um tested specifically the rat algernon and so they want to go ahead and, and move forward with human testings and he's chosen and he agrees and his family agrees obviously at the um they have to get his family's approval because he they don't see him as fit to uh sort of approve something so so big so they get his family's approval they go ahead and go through with it and it's successful and he be he becomes incredibly smart he his intelligence surpasses that of the scientists who created the project it surpasses that of sort of most of not everybody that he meets and so it's about how he deals with that and how um he has to interact with other people and how others deal with him and how the world embraces him and and he begins to realize things about his past and it's just it's a beautiful it's a heartbreaking book and i will talk a lot more about it in my full review but this is another one that i definitely definitely recommend so the short story that i read what was The Mirror and the Maze by Renee Adier. She is um, the author of A Wrath in the Dawn. And this takes place, this is like 1.5. So this takes place between books one and two. And it's about the aftermath of um, when Shazi has to leave the castle and we see how the Khalid finds out and just everything that he's seeing in the city uh, that they're in and everything. And it's really, really short and it doesn't, it just sort of get answers for you how he felt um, in the aftermath of her leaving. There, it doesn't add all that much to the story really, and you can, you definitely don't have to read it. But I, um, for one of my challenges for my year-long book challenge, it's said to read one of these in between short stories. So a lot of the YA fantasies have them, the 1.5s or the 0.5s or whatever. So I read that one. I think it was free on like Amazon or something. 
so I read it and it was it was good it was fun um I, I enjoy her writing a lot and I enjoyed the story I can't wait for her next one I think their next one is said to be like Mulan inspired or something like that which is awesome so that's what I read and I gave that one uh, like a four out of five stars it was fun very quick read read it in probably like 20 minutes or so um so yeah i mean if you want to get those i think they're free on amazon if you want to get them on your phone or something definitely go ahead and recommend that um but yeah so those are my thoughts on the books that i've read this past month again i apologize if i was a little off today um i don't feel too great but um thank you so much for watching and for being here with me if you've read any of these books please let me know down below uh if you want to read any of these books please let me know down below um and yeah thank you so much i love you guys have a great day Mwah.